Hi everybody, it's Franny, and as you can see, we have an empty bay here today. That's because we've got a very special guest coming over. We're actually doing a collab with a, oh, I don't know, kind of a small, they're ginormous, YouTube channel that's up north of us. And you guys may know Tommy, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. He's bringing a new car over today. We're gonna throw it up on the lift, and we're gonna check it out. It's gonna be great fun. Wow, look at this. You're not getting any closer to divorce from here. <laughs> <laughs> it looks amazing. Uh, look at this. It was like one of those things where I definitely shouldn't have bought it, but now I have. Yeah, well. And now you can tell me what a mistake I've made. Oh, no. That's cute. No, no. Well, thank you. Nice to see you. It's good to I see you too. How are you? Nice to see you. Now we can hug. I know. That's crazy, awesome, right? right? <laughs> what, a, what a time to be alive. Yes. Have you guys been? Good. 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 Oh good. wow. Great. The garage is looking better than ever. <laughs> so good. So, so good. everybody knows who this is. This is Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, tell, tell, tell the people a little bit. Well, um, I help run a couple of YouTube channels. Yeah, they're, you know, they're small channels, <laughs> much yeah. smaller than our channel. Right. Called, like yeah. TFL car, TFL truck. Like, yeah, <laughs> dude. These guys are the saviors. Now, I have a little bit of like a Volkswagen problem. So we had the beige one, yes, which we did yes, a bunch of years ago. Yes, yes. Um, but then we had to sell it because like the series was over and I yeah. didn't have the money to buy from the company. Awesome. But then I was like, you know what? I want another one. And I want it to be red. And then, like, they're kind of getting harder to find. Yes, they are. Like, and expensive. I don't too, know if I it's think. a COVID thing. Yeah. But yeah, they got right. expensive and hard to yeah. find. Yeah. So this one popped up on Craigslist. And I'm like, eh, I shouldn't buy it. It's probably got problems. And then I went and saw it. And I'm like, ah, I shouldn't buy it. It's got ah. a lot of problems. And now we're here. And now we're here. <laughs> Oh, this is great though. Yeah, so um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna do a once over on the car. We're gonna look at everything inside now, throw it up on the lift, look underneath it. We're gonna see if there's anything crazy going on. Now, do your folks know that you owned a 71 Super Beetle? Yeah, so I did. I think I've mentioned that before. I had a 71 Super Beetle, has 72 at one point, and even a 73 for a short period of time. But yeah, so, um, and then everybody remembers Lemon Drop, the, uh, our friend's 68 Cabriolet that we have all the time over, so. Which has been yeah. brilliantly helpful. Yes. By the way. Yes. That's a, that that car has provided a lot of content. I've learned so much. <laughs> the last like nine hours of my life has been binge watching it. So. Oh, great! All sorts of funky tools. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. There's all sorts of weird stuff. You're supposed to be able to work on them on the side of the road, mm -hmm. provided you have Volkswagen tool number, you know, zero three seven two <laughs> or whatever it is. So. Um, but yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty straightforward, but oh great. So well, thank you for your help. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So here's the story with this car. So it was bought by this lady in 1981 or 1982 as okay. her very first car when Sweet. she turned 16. Wow. Yeah. And she kept it all these years. Oh my gosh. Which I thought was really cool, which yeah. is one of the main reasons I bought it. But I kind of have that correlation wrong where just cause like you own something for a long time means mm -hmm. you take like perfect care of it <laughs> because I know it's got one really bad repaint in like the early 80s. Okay. As you can see, it was orange. Oh yes. And I'm, was? I'm confused. Yeah, here you can see here. You oh, see yeah. this orange. Yeah. I'm kind of confused as why someone would go through all the effort to, to go from like orange to a slightly more red orange. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you know? That's like, why funny. not just paint it the same color? Yeah, and the orange isn't a bad the color. Orange is a great color. Yeah. Um, and she loved it and she cared about it, allegedly. Uh -huh. um, and, like, it only came out in parades, so, like, the rear bumper's covered in, like, tape from, like, oh, right. <laughs> Fourth of July parade <laughs> and stuff. But, yeah, she just kept it for all these years. Um, and then kids got older and they're like, well, we need to buy them a car when they turn 16. Right. So, uh, right. this right. had to go. And I think I overpaid for it by a lot. So I paid 13,000 for it. That's um, actually not bad. That's a great that's Yeah, because, um, <laughs> I yeah. Think that's really good. Actually. Because I am still living yeah. in like 2017 Volkswagen market. They've gone up a lot. Have They've, they? Yeah, up to 40, 50,000, 60,000 for a beautiful, perfect old Beetle. What? Yeah, yeah, they can be very expensive. People so. are paying fifty grand yes. for a perfect beetle. Yeah, for it's gonna be per, it's gotta be like a fifty-eight, fifty-nine. They're getting very popular. I think they're doubling about from what they were four or five years ago. Unreal. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Even though they built twenty-one million of them, they're <laughs> well, like yeah. really fun with the top down. They are really good. They're yeah. a little wobbly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're a lot they're of fun. They're a beetle. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're a little. And then the the top when it's down, and if you put the cover on it, you know the sort of boot cover over the back of the top, it sticks way up. You can see nothing behind it. Should we show them? Okay. Now, Franny, we need to get this top down because it's going to make me feel a little better about the purchase. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, look at that. Then you have your, this is your boot cover, yes? Yeah. You wanna... Yeah, so we don't have to go crazy and put it all on. But, but that basically see. just covers it up, right? It just covers it up and, mm -hmm. where is it? We have it twisted or? Here, I'm sure. 
<laughs> there you go. Things are always a, a bit of an intelligence test. Yep, and then go? that just slots on like that. Yeah. I'm so, sure that's been replaced uh -huh, that's at some it. point. So the, the funny thing is, is that when you're sitting in here and you're driving, you, <laughs> you really can't see out the back of these cars because the top sits up so high. Funny thing, neat little piece of trivia, is the new Beetles uh -huh. that they put out in the early 2000s, they wanted to make sure that the back, when the top went down, that the back of it looked identical to the old cars. No way! Yeah, they did. And that was also a problem. I had a 2003 uh, Beetle convertible turbo. It was awesome. Oh. I love that car. But it was the same problem. When the top was down, it would sort of flop down like this, and it would sit up, and you couldn't see out the back of the car. It's That's hilarious. such a cool piece of trivia. Yeah. I didn't know. All right, you want to yeah. pull it inside? Yeah. Please start. I'm going to be so <laughs> mad at you if you don't start right now. Come on, kiddo. Oh, good. Remember when we had that beige one? You're like, valve adjustments are pretty important. Yeah. I don't think this thing is a valve adjustment in 45 years. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, that's a big deal. <laughs> they, that should be done every, oh, I think it's like 3,000 miles. It's kind of almost every other oil change, maybe, or every oil change events. Is it really? Okay. Yeah, about every other oil change. The other thing is that I noticed since it was pretty flooded when I went to start it, yep. I'm guessing, I haven't looked back there, but I'm guessing it has an aftermarket fuel pump in it. You are 100% right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I did a bit on that. The problem is that those pumps put out too much pressure and they blow past the needle and seat on the carb. Sorry, too much pressure? Yes. And they will just overrun the carburetor and then it sits there and it just pukes fuel into the engine. And so when you go to start it, it's always too rich. distributor though that's good yeah it's still got the vacuum advance it's got a different carb on it yeah it um, does let me go ahead and shut it off yeah all right franny so what's what's the first disaster you see back here what do you what's good and what's not it really doesn't look bad at all uh, my only thing is that we've obviously got an issue with this aftermarket fuel pump my guess is that it's putting out too much pressure i've seen that so many times i've had to add regulators to these i'm not a big fan of alarm <laughs> systems they need to trash out electrical systems now okay from your experience uh, when people do stuff like this right where they, they plop on an aftermarket carburetor uh is the new stuff as good as the original or are you always compromising it yeah it's you know it's just a copy so uh uh, this is an MP and it's a 34P3. A lot of these carburetors aren't that bad, actually. I haven't seen a lot of problems with them. They don't leak, and uh, but the old ones can be rebuilt. Yeah. And I still have the old one, so maybe, maybe I'll go that route oh, one day. Oh, if you do, oh, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can rebuild the old one pretty easily. Um, no, it doesn't look too bad. It really doesn't. These guys, very, very important that these are on here. So that's great to see. So many cars I see these are missing. Now, are these for the heating system or those for actually cooling the engine? Yes and yes, okay. actually. So both things. If these, these are for the heat exchangers down there, uh, but if these are off, then you've got quite a bit of air from the shroud just going into nowhere. And you really don't want that. You really want to make sure that if the heater boxes are closed, that all the air is going to cool the engine. That's pretty important. Now you've had a bunch of these, and this is one thing I've always wondered. So, I mean, talk about like the, 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 the king of air cooled up there, right? <laughs> yes. Um, they never had like temperature gauges. How do you know if a Volkswagen or an old Porsche is overheating? I, generally, it stops running. <laughs> <laughs> um, they get awfully hot. You can get a thermometer to put in your oil dipstick. You can pull this out. It's a cute little addition for the 356s. Hmm. And you just put it in there. It has a little temperature gauge on top of it. But uh, other than that... Um, I mean, I imagine it's not good to overheat them, right? No, it's actually quite bad for them, as it is for any car. Even air-cooled or liquid-cooled, just overheating is bad. Uh, you keep it in tune, you, uh, there is one thing I'm noticing that it's missing and it's going to require an engine pull to fix that. Mm -hmm. And that is this rubber gasket and it's all kind of broken and cracked. Oh yeah. There's, it needs to have a rubber gasket all the way around to seal the engine from the bottom of the car. That's very important for cooling and, uh, really something that needs to get done. But these engines are so easy to pull out. They're literally four bolts, fuel line, a couple of electrical things, and you just pull them back, boom, they go down. Now, I bought this book, um, and it's 
written in like 1969 and it's like the ultimate guide to keeping your Volkswagen yes, on the road. Yes, yes. Um, and I was reading it and one of the great things that the author talked about is how like it's very important that like the engine bay is nice and clean, um, which this one obviously isn't. Have it's you? It's not bad. So it's not too bad? No, the engine bay doesn't look bad as far as greasy and dirty. Now these guys, it's neat to see an original air bath air cleaner on the car that I imagine it's a little bit grimy and dirty because people just don't clean it. Um, and it's a bit of, it's a little bit of a maintenance thing. You take this off the car, comes off, it's just a single bolt here. Pop this guy off and you can pull this out and there'll be oil up to about here all the way around. And the air, as it comes in, flows through that oil and across that oil to catch any dirt and grime. Once again, these cars were built specifically for post-World War II Germany. You didn't have a lot of tools. You didn't have a lot of spare parts. How can we build this to where you don't have to replace a paper air filter every time? Hmm. How can you fix this on the side of the road? Um, air and oil do it all. Um, the famous <laughs> quote from John Murr from, you, from the book. Yeah. Right? yeah. How to keep your Volkswagen alive for the complete idiot. Uh, that's... Uh -huh. An amazing book. It's got everything in it that you need. And he's a big fan of the simplicity of this design. And everybody seems to overcomplicate these cars and there's no need for it. They do really well by themselves. It's interesting. Yeah. Good. But yes, you got a new, you got a new damper here. That's nice. Let's see what else do we have. Up here, these arms should not move up and down. And it doesn't look like they're moving up and down. So that's a big deal. That's great. Now the front end of a Super Beetle is totally different than a standard Beetle, right? Yes, and it has a completely different suspension. So it has a McPherson strut, which is totally different. Doesn't use the torsion bars up front like the old ones did. Now which one's better? You know, that's a good <laughs> question. Uh, the one nice thing about the McPherson strut is it gives you quite a bit more trunk room. You've got that nice deep area in the trunk and the tire sits flat down in there. The Torsion bar cars, the wheel sort of sits at an angle and kind of, you don't get much trunk room up front. I don't know, I think these probably do handle better. I like the softness of a torsion bar, mm -hmm. actually, to be honest. I think they work great, but... I heard they're a little more durable, too. Like yeah. when you're building a Baja bug, you want to start with the standard Yeah, needle. they always use those for Bajas. They don't, wouldn't use something like this for a Baja bug. There should be a rubber little cover over every one of these things. Oh, oh gotcha. Thing. So anything rubber needs to be replaced. Yeah. yeah. So the other, the outside holes here, are so you can check your pads, and they actually look pretty good. You can check the wear on your pads. By okay. Those. They look pretty good. I mean, there's a little bit of surface rust here. That's I not mean, a big deal. That's horrible. That's this gotta is a get deal. Fixed. That's yeah. gonna have to get fixed. Now this is probably something, and I was talking to some folks, but it, it sounds like you can, for the most part, basically buy new heating channels, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then cut them out and have someone who knows how to weld them like me, like weld them in. <laughs> yep. Uh, the Lemon Drop, the little car that we worked on before, they somebody put some big, huge, beefy ones on there. Really strong. Very strong. Great to jack the car up on them. They were so strong. But this is not, I, I mean, assume, especially on some of these like early 80s restorations, these cars weren't worth anything. I, mm -hmm. I bet you saw a lot of Volkswagens that had rusted heater cores. Oh, yeah, and, and this is nothing compared to what you're used to seeing. Really? They're gone, you know. Oh, wow. And you said you think they put in new panels? Yeah. I think probably new floor pans. Yeah. Um, now, if, if like this was your car, right? Obviously, that's like the start of corrosion. Mm -hmm. Is this something you would like grind down and then repaint? I would before I would, it gets worse. Yeah, I would sand that out. It doesn't look too awfully bad, and then just re-coat the bottom. Cool. Yeah, not not. It's certainly not a huge issue, and I mean, it's certainly not a Flintstones car, <laughs> right? So, this car has CV joints. So I want to make sure our boots are in good shape here. The best way to look for bad. CV joints is not even because it's kind of hard to see sometimes you're like well is it is it here is it here where is it sometimes they split inside look for the telltale sign of just oil everywhere oh um or grease actually grease being flung all over the place and that's the best way to find it very interesting there's something going on up here this bit here yeah you see the rusty bit here? oh yeah look at that there. so that piece if you're gonna go to the welder, you might need to get that All right. to replace. <laughs> yeah. So the whole rear portion underneath the top, basically. It's the same issue. Oh yeah, it's look at that! Ah! Yeah, it looks it's like, a, I think it's a piece of fiberglass sitting up there. So it's like the whole area under the top rusted out and they yeah. just plopped like a fiberglass thing in it. Yeah. Bummer. That can be fixed. Oh, I see it. And this is a torsion bar suspension in the back of the car huh. here. Is that something that can sag over time? Like, do torsion bars fail? Like, kind of. I guess people say that they do, but the torsion bars on our 
58 through 56 have never been replaced. They don't, they're just, just a, literally a piece of steel that gets twisted. So if they get twisted past the point in which they can't come back, that's a problem. Huh. But they're also adjustable as well, so you can go in and readjust them and readjust the height of this. Super interesting. Yeah, they've got these really interesting set of different splines on both ends so that you can pull it out, twist it that way, and then pull back on the other one and get like a half turn on the splines. It's really kind of a neat system. Unreal. Now what about all of this oil everywhere? That's um, all over your beautiful driveway now. No, it's fine. Before we get to that, this is why your heater doesn't work on this side. It looks like this, this wire broke. And you can kind of see what it should look like over here on this side. So it wasn't disconnected, it just broke. <laughs> it just snapped, yeah. It should have a little... Uh... Did someone tell you it's disconnected or did they tell you it just wasn't working? Yeah, he's like, I think it's been disconnected at some point. Uh, like, well, right. technically, I suppose it is disconnected, <laughs> yes. So yeah, it just, you can get you have to replace this wire, right. which is a little bit of a pain to get through. But now, so you mentioned about the oil. It uh, looks like the transmission might be uh, just dripping a little bit there. And we've got a little bit on the seal of the transmission back here. Okay. Always, when I'm looking underneath the cars, the first thing I'm always looking for is, any is there anything wet? You know? Right. So we're looking at wetness here, here. So this, this just really screws in until it kind of stops. It's like a tapered thread, so that just probably needs some, you know, probably should do the transmission oil if you haven't done that. Now, when you pull the engine, does the transmission come with it or do you leave no, the trans No, it doesn't. In? It, okay. it leaves the transmission. So we're Thankfully right through like here. <laughs> We've got an engine mount here, uh -huh. um, right off the end here. This guy and this guy, and they, they don't look like they're, well, I don't know. They don't look too bad. You can kind of see them here. Are they little rubber guys? Yeah, a little rubber guys. Oh, yeah. Mount there. Mm -hmm. And then there's one over on this side as well. Mm. So if you're going to pull the engine, might as well just replace those mounts. Get new ones of those, yep. Yeah. I mean, nice and clean. yeah, when there is this much oil everywhere, like how do you even start to diagnose where it's coming from? You, you really can't. And that's part of the problem. I mean, that they just, they need to be cleaned first because everything's greasy and gooey. Mm -hmm. So you can't really tell where it's coming from. Like this, where did all this come from? Did it come from here? Did it come down from here? Remember the air is blowing this way when you're driving. So was there something upstream? Did this come? It's impossible to tell. But once you clean it, you get a much better indication. There's another rubber gasket on the back of the engine. I can see holes in that as well. So okay. yeah, when this engine comes out, when you pull the engine out, you're definitely going to replace all of that. It's not hard and not expensive. Hmm. So I was talking to the, the previous owner of this car, and yes. she's not entirely sure like the engine has ever been like rebuilt. Oh my, um, wow. Now is How that- How many miles from the car? 117,000. Okay. All is right. that like, you hear the word rebuild and typically that's like 25, 30, $40,000 on like a fancy car. I mean, is that something like a home mechanic can do on a yes. Volkswagen? Yep, absolutely. And all the parts are available. You can take bits to the machine shops around town and get things done. We have a couple of good ones downtown actually <laughs> that they can they can do whatever you need to get done on the car. So like all of this, like if, if the two halves of what, what the crank case are leaking, Sure. That can all be taken apart and yes. cleaned. And, yeah, okay. crack the case apart and when they put it back together, reseal it. And when, these engines should not leak. I, that's a, I know everybody's, <laughs> we all bought these cars, most of us did, when they were used. And they'd been used for a while. And yes, they do have a tendency to leak over time. But they didn't leave the factory and they didn't leave <laughs> the Volkswagen agency leaking all over the place. So they shouldn't leak. They really shouldn't. Huh. Transmissions shouldn't leak and engines shouldn't leak. How long they stay that way. So when you're doing a valve adjustment, do you do yes. it from underneath just by the exhaust there? It's actually easier to pull a wheel out. So if you get from underneath, and I've done this from underneath a lot, but you can see how you're, you're kind of craning back there to look underneath there. Mm -hmm. A better way to do it is actually to jack up the car and pull the rear wheels off. And oh. you've got a straight shot to the valve covers. Super there. interesting. And yeah. then um, spark plugs to the top or to the Start bottom? Spark plugs to the top because okay. they're above the seal. Huh. And they are a bit of a pain, but the trick to spark plugs is always to do them when the engine is cold. You can get them out, but when you go to put them back in and the engine's really hot, it'll feel like they're cross-threading. Uh -huh. Because if you think about it, if you've got a plate of metal with a hole in it and you heat it up, the hole gets bigger. I, it doesn't get smaller, it gets bigger. It gets bigger with a whole bit of metal gets bigger. So if it's looser, why is it harder to get in? And I think it's the thickness. It, you know, as metal expands, it gets thicker and thicker. The threads are now a little farther apart. Huh. So now you're just off a little bit on the pitch of the threads. And when the spark plug's in there and the whole thing's in there and everybody's expanding roughly together, that's fine. 
But when you pull them out and the spark plugs cool off, then all of a sudden they're really hard to get back in. Wow. So the trick is to do it when the engine is fairly cold. And of course you have to adjust your valves when you're cold. That's super interesting. They have to be done when the engine is stone cold. Huh. Must be done cold because that's where the engineers set the tolerances. Is that a pretty hard job to do that? No, it's okay. not. It's actually really simple. It's a matter of just when you pull these covers off there, you'll see the end of the rocker arms and there's a little nut in there and a screw and you loosen up the nut and you adjust them according to their spec of what they should be. Pretty easy to do. We could do that. if you. Yeah, if, that'd uh, be kind of fun. Yeah, we could go through and do a whole sort of tune-up-y thing on the car. It does take a little bit of time. It's not too bad. Yeah. Okay. Well, guys... Thank you so much for, for helping me with this. I think it would be super fun. Um, I know like your time is hugely valuable, but I would love to like learn about some of these things and like Let's how they work. Let's do it. Let's do it. That'd It'd be, be really fun. fun. Yeah. yeah, it would. Um, so maybe we'll set something up and yeah, it would be huge.